I live by myself in a two-story house. It's not that big, but enough space for me, and I've lived here for about five years now. Something really crazy happened last year. I worked pretty late one night. After getting home, I went inside of my house and was planning to pretty much go straight to bed. So I went down the hallway, took a shower, and then went into my bedroom. It was right after I got into my bedroom that I thought I heard the sound of a door opening downstairs. Obviously, I was home alone, so I didn't know what that would be. I didn't hear it that clearly, so I stopped what I was doing and listened. I thought that I heard footsteps then. I couldn't exactly tell where they were coming from or where they were going. I also didn't know which door inside of my house I had heard opening. It was not the front door, it just sounded like it was downstairs someplace. So as I stood there just inside of my bedroom listening, the noises quieted down. I no longer heard footsteps of somebody walking or anything. I was still pretty freaked out about it though. After about a minute or two, I still hadn't heard anything and I got up the courage to investigate. Most of my lights inside were off, so I left my bedroom and headed downstairs. I started turning on just about every light and going in one room at a time. I was really nervous and didn't know what to expect, but each room that I entered, I didn't see anybody there. Eventually, I made it around all the rooms on the main level of my house. I was very confused, but also relieved that I didn't see anyone. I thought that maybe I had just been hearing things or imagining. Still. The noises seemed pretty real when I had heard them. So then I went around and turned all the lights back out. I was going to finally go back to bed when I got to the staircase and was about to go up. I heard another noise. It was the sound of a door opening again, except this time I could tell that it was the door leading to the basement. I hadn't checked the basement at all when looking through my house. I realized that somebody must have been down there. From where I was, I could not see the door to the basement. I quickly started going upstairs to get to my bedroom. As I was doing this, I heard footsteps moving around on the main level, heading in my direction. I got to the top of the stairs and then went to my bedroom. As I was going inside there, I heard whoever was inside of my house starting to go up the stairs. Now I was extremely nervous. I locked my bedroom door behind me and quickly went for my cell phone. Then I dialed 911. As I was doing this, the footsteps started to reach the top of the stairs. I told the 911 dispatcher that there was an intruder in my home, and I gave them the address. Meanwhile, the footsteps got closer and closer to my room. Then the person tried entering. The door did not open because it was locked. After trying the door, the person seemed to go across the hallway to another room. I stayed inside of my bedroom and feared that the person might try to get into my room again. However, I heard the footsteps moving back down the hallway less than a minute later. Then I heard them going back downstairs. Whoever was there seemed to go back down. After that, I really didn't hear anything. When the police got there, I finally left my bedroom. They came inside and searched my entire house, including the basement, but they didn't find anyone. They also searched outside, but came up empty there as well. However, they did notice that my back door was unlocked. Whoever had been there had left. I never saw what they looked like, but I had forgotten to lock the back door to my house and that's likely how they got in. They must have been hiding in my basement. It just really creeps me out knowing that they tried entering my bedroom, knowing that I was in there. The person never came back though. This happened a couple of years ago. One night, I was at home by myself. My wife happened to be out with her friend, and I figured that she would be back at around 11 or so. It was probably roughly nine o'clock at night and it was dark out. My house is in a pretty typical neighborhood and I enjoy living there. So I remember that it was Thursday night and garbage comes every Friday morning. I realized that I had forgotten to take out the trash, so I decided to do so right then and there. After going around the house and getting all the trash bags, I then left my house and took them to the trash cans. They were next to my garage, and I then took those down to the end of the driveway where they would go every week to be picked up. Then I headed back to go inside. But when I was walking back to my house and going up the driveway, I saw something. There was a man that was walking near the bush by my front door. 
I didn't know who he was. Before I could say anything or do anything, the man walked right up to my front door and went inside. My heart sank when I saw that. I quickly started running towards my house. I got a rush of adrenaline, and as I was doing so, I knew that it might potentially be dangerous. Still, this was my house and I had to protect it. So I went inside, and after entering the house, I realized that the man was about 20 feet ahead of me. I yelled at him to stop and to get out of my house. He didn't say anything back, but he moved towards the hallway. At that point, I saw him open up this doorway. We have an attic, and it's kind of weird, but the way you get there is by opening a door in the hallway. It's almost like any bedroom door, but a little bit skinnier. There's a narrow staircase then leading up. I'm not sure if the guy was just trying to go into a random room, or if he knew that that led to the attic, but the man quickly went inside and then shut the door behind him. I started walking over, but then stopped myself. For a moment, I realized the potential danger that I was in. I knew that I needed to call the police. Still, I was angry, and I wanted the man out of my house. I then stupidly decided to go after him. We rarely used our attic. It was really just for storage. The room up there was small, and it was so out of the way. Up there, we had just random junk and stuff. So I went over and I opened the door. I saw the very narrow staircase, and it was really dark because none of the lights were on up there. I called out saying that the guy had to go. I went up two or three steps, and then I heard a noise. The next thing I knew, I just barely saw a large box flying towards me. It ended up landing just in front of me and then hitting me in the shins and feet. The man had thrown a random box full of junk at me. Before he got a chance to do it again, I turned around and I left the attic area. I then walked out and called the police. Then I left the house and went out into my car in the driveway. I felt like that was the safest place to be. The whole time that I waited, I did not notice the man leaving. When the police got there, they went inside and they got the man out of my attic. I don't know why he was there. Obviously, he took advantage of me leaving the house to take out the trash. I'm lucky that I wasn't hurt or anything though. This happened when I had just recently started renting a new house. Well, the house itself was not new, but it was new to me. I had moved to that city for my job and needed a place to live, so I was going month to month in this rental place. It was a pretty standard house for the most part. It had two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a basement which was unfinished. Not long into living there, I started noticing sort of strange noises at night. I would be in bed and trying to fall asleep and think that I heard some things from downstairs. I couldn't really tell what the noises were though. At first, it made me nervous that somebody was in my house, but I quickly chalked it up to just a house making noises. Maybe it was the heaters, or maybe it was just old house noises. Because of where I was in my bedroom with the door closed, I never heard them that clearly. One night though, I heard something that seemed louder. So much so, that it caused me to get up and out of bed. I decided to go downstairs and look around. When I did so though, I didn't see anything unusual and I heard no more noises. I figured that it was just the old house. I hadn't lived in a house like that, so I didn't really know what to expect with everything. I mean, I'd come from living with roommates or a big family my entire life and never exactly had a really quiet house. So for a few more nights, I just ignored the sounds that I heard. But then another night, things seemed particularly loud again. I just wasn't buying that it was just the house or the heating system or whatever. I once more got out of bed and went downstairs to investigate. After looking around, I thought that I heard a noise in the basement. I decided to go down there. Now, I know that there were some things down there that could possibly make noises. There were several pipes hanging around and stuff. The water heater and other things were also down there. But the noise that I heard coming from there didn't really sound like any of that. It sounded like possibly a person was there. So I walked over and opened up the door to go down into the basement. When I did, I saw that it was very dark down there. But I also heard a noise and was sure that it was a person. I stopped, unsure if I should continue. However, these noises stopped after a short time. Then it was just silence. I slowly walked down the stairs and I called out asking if anybody was there. 
but I got no response. When I made it into the basement, I did not see anyone, and I didn't hear anything at all either. I turned on the only dim light that was down there. It didn't illuminate much, but it was better than nothing. I also turned on the flashlight on my phone to see better as well. The basement really wasn't all that big. However, when I got to one corner, I noticed something. There was an old box that had been there since I moved in. It looked like there was something behind the box. When I moved it, I saw a sleeping bag and a few water bottles. They certainly were not there the last time I had been down there. It made me realize that somebody had in fact been down there, and it looked like they had been living there. I got so freaked out that I ran back upstairs and called 911 immediately. The police came out and looked through my entire house. Nobody was there. After searching the property though, they made an interesting discovery. My basement was mostly all underground, but there were windows towards the top of the basement which would be at the bottom of the ground, leading to outside. One of the windows was extremely easy to open. It was in a garden area in the backyard. It was easy to open from the outside or the inside, and that must have been how the person was coming and going. I had the window replaced the very next day. After that, the person did not return. It really freaks me out knowing that I was living with somebody in my basement for possibly like a week. I'm glad that I never saw them or I really would have flipped out. When I was younger, I rented a room and lived there for a little while. I didn't have much money and was trying to save up for a nicer place. The only place I could really afford in that city was this room. It was an attic in this older house. The house had four bedrooms and then an attic as well. There were two people living in the house as roommates. Then there was me living in the attic. It was kind of weird because I didn't know the people before moving in. I also wasn't really friends with them when I lived there. I would have to walk up the stairs and sometimes see them to get into my attic. But once inside, in the attic I had, it was basically like a really large room. There was a bathroom attached and then this tiny kitchen area in the corner. I had never lived in an attic before, but I didn't mind it too much. The neighborhood seemed nice as well, and it was the typical suburbs with lots of houses nearby. Well, one night, I was fast asleep, only to be awoken sometime in the middle of the night. After turning over in bed and closing my eyes to go back to sleep, I heard a noise. It sounded like something had hit my window. This seemed odd. Even though I was half asleep, I knew that my window was not next to a tree branch or something that would strike it, and it was too high up for somebody to knock on it. I listened, and then less than a minute later, I heard it again. This time, I decided to get up. I walked over and looked out of the window. When I did, I saw this man standing outside. He was in our front yard and next to a tree. I did not recognize him, but I also couldn't see him very well with it being nighttime. The man then appeared to throw something at me. It was a rock, and it struck the window. Luckily, the rock was not very large, and it didn't break the window. I kept watching, and the man soon tossed another one. This one didn't hit the window, but it hit the roof nearby. I had no idea who this guy was or what he was doing. I was hoping and thinking that maybe some neighbor just got really drunk and was being reckless. I couldn't think of why anybody would want to throw rocks at me. As I continued looking out the window, the man suddenly turned and ran off down the street. Then I just covered up the window with the shades and then went back to bed and went back to sleep. The next day, I happened to see my roommates when I was leaving and I asked them if they had seen the guy or heard him. Neither of them had and I guess they slept through it. So anyways, that very same night, the guy was back. Once more, I was awoken to a small rock being thrown at my window. I woke up and looked out again to see the guy was back. This time, I looked at the clock and it was sometime after 2 in the morning. The man stood there facing me outside from the yard again. After a few moments, he fired another rock in my direction. I was seriously considering calling the police at that point. In fact, I got out my phone and was about to dial, but then the man turned and ran off into the night. Now looking back, I should have still called and reported it, but I figured that the guy was gone now and they wouldn't be able to catch him so nothing really could be done. So then I just went back to bed. I tried to make sense of it and figure out why a guy would be throwing rocks at my window. I couldn't think of anything though. 
So the next day, I went to work as usual, but I happened to be out late that night. I went out with some friends and drove back home at like midnight. At the house I was renting the attic in, we did not have a driveway and just parked our cars on the side of the street. So after getting back and pulling over, I got out of my car. But then I noticed that there was somebody standing randomly in our front yard. It was not any of my roommates. I realized that it was the same guy. When I noticed that, I had a really bad feeling. But I was already out of my car and walking towards the yard now. I didn't want to turn around and go back. The guy was a ways to my right and not blocking me or anything. So I was hoping that I would be able to just walk right past him. I walked quickly, and when I approached the front step, I could sense that the man was now walking after me. I quickly made it inside and then locked the door behind me. I wondered what on earth the guy was doing now. This time though, I called the police right then and there. Then I went up into my attic. I looked outside from my window but could not locate the man. When the police got there, I remember seeing them arriving. At that point, I saw a man come out from behind a tree and attempt to run away. However, he was quickly caught by the police. They determined that he was the same individual that had been throwing rocks at my window. I never found out why he was doing that though. I'm just glad that after that, it stopped. When I was a kid, I lived with my parents and older sister in our house that was a bit out in the country. We had a pretty big yard and the neighborhood was typically very quiet. This is something that happened when I was 14. On this night, my parents were gone someplace. I can't remember where. My older sister was at her friend's house. I remember that. My best friend from school, Trey, came over to hang out. We then went down into the basement to play video games. Our basement was pretty nice and had carpet floors with a giant couch and TV as well. I had my PlayStation hooked up and so we started gaming. There was a sliding glass door down there that opened up to the backyard. So after Trey and I had been gaming for a while, we suddenly heard this knock coming from the glass window. Him and I both looked over at the same time. There were these blinds that went all the way to the floor that you could open and close with one of those pole things. However, they were only like halfway closed. Usually when it got dark out, we would close them entirely, but I had forgot. My instant reaction was that maybe my sister was returning home and she had forgotten her house key. This way was not at all a normal way for family or anyone to enter the house. We always used either the front door or the door leading in from the garage, so this definitely seemed strange. But after looking for a moment, I realized that somebody else was there. It looked like some random woman who I didn't know. It was not one of the neighbors. This was especially strange with how far out we lived. There would hardly even be people out walking down on the street. Trey and I were both very surprised and we didn't really know what to do. The woman then moved closer and knocked again. She then actually tried to open the door. I got up and took just a step closer to it. I called out to the woman asking who she was. She said something, but I couldn't make it out with the door being closed. Then she knocked again. I yelled at her to go away. Then I heard her asking me to open the door and let her in. I was not going to do that. I told her no, and then the woman sort of wandered off. She slowly moved away from the door, and then me and Trey walked over and looked out. She was walking off into our backyard someplace. I then called my dad and told him what was going on. He said that if the woman returned to call the police and also to make sure that every door was locked. So we went around and did just that. Every door was locked and after looking into the backyard and not seeing the woman, we returned to gaming and figured that she left. I also closed the blinds completely so that we could not see into the backyard. I felt much better and we played video games for maybe 30 minutes. However, out of nowhere, there was a sudden loud noise of glass breaking. As soon as I heard it, Trey and I both got up and sprinted for the stairs. We ran all the way back upstairs and went into my bedroom. Then we called the police. The only thing I knew at that point was that the large sliding glass door window had been broken. We sort of heard noises downstairs in the house, but tried not to focus on them. We hid in my bedroom until the cops got there. When they did, they quickly found the woman in the basement and arrested her. She had smashed the sliding glass door with an old lawn chair that we had outside in the backyard. 
I was told that she was on drugs, but other than that, I don't know why she did it. I was really glad for the fast response time from police and that they caught the woman.